All right, so now I'm thinking we should get into um, a little bit of animating, just because uh, modeling can get a little tedious, and I'm ready for something new for a minute. So what we're gonna do, since we've got our our uh, rudder built up here, or our vertical anyway, we are going to now. Let's see, why am I not? There we go. We are now going to uh, cut out our rudder and animate it. So what you can see is, if you've been following along, you'll see that I've I've already kind of um, shaped out the rudder as I was modeling, and I've I've also been doing that, of course, with the doors and the windows because it just makes it easier later on to cut things out. You don't want to get your whole main shape built and then have to come back and reshape everything to fit that stuff. It's just easier if you do it as you go. So let's make our rudder. So we're going to grab all of this. It's easier to just do it by the faces. Grab all of this. And then P, separate by selection. And it's just that easy. We've we have now separated and have our rudder. We're gonna hide that, go onto this. And let's, uh, let's just do a little bit of this real quick. We'll clean it up better later. I just would like to get into at least a animation done. Also, you'll notice that um, I have been trying my very best to keep squares. You don't really want triangles. It's just a lot cleaner if you keep all your polygons as squares. All right. Now we're going to add, let's make sure our cursors are the center, and then we're going to add an empty, just a plain axis empty. We're going to grab it, bring it back here, and we will rotate. Let's put this on wireframe for a second. This is basically our hinge. So we want to set up the Z axis of this empty as our hinge. That's our hinge right there should be right down the center okay that's our hinge and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna select our rudder shift select the empty control P set parent to object okay now let's do a little bit of animating here so we've got our empty come down here let's turn on automatic keyframes We'll jump to our number, our second spot, and uh, let's rotate. And here's why we use the empty. If we hit R to rotate, we hit Z, and then we hit Z again. Now we are rotating along our hinge we created. Okay, we're gonna rotate by 20. You can see from our top view here, if we go from a front view, that we're rotated, all right? Okay, so we've gone 20, and it's created a keyframe, but it's only created the keyframe for our empty. So let's select the, the rudder itself, tell it we want a location and rotation keyframe, and tell it to keyframe that. Okay, now we're going to go back to our empty, jump over one more frame, 
we're going to rotate on the z negative 20. Now we should be back at zero. It's created a keyframe for the empty. We're going to select our rudder and create a keyframe for that. Now select our empty one more time. Rotate on the Z. Remember hit it twice to get to that axis. Now we're going to go negative 20. Whoops. Let me undo that real quick. I forgot to jump one more keyframe. Okay, we jump our keyframe, rotate on the Z, negative 20. Grab the rudder. Tell it to lock in that keyframe as well. And now, as we step through those, we see it move. And that'll make more sense if we can see everything. So let's go like that. And we step through. Okay, we see it moving. But we're not done yet. Now we need to come over, select our rudder, come over here to our little box and add a data ref. This is how X-Plane is going to tell it what should animate it. Just click on this little uh, spyglass. We'll search down here and we're going to search for rudder 1. Click on that. Okay, now at this point, so right now, our rudder's sitting at zero, value is zero, we're just gonna hit this little key that marks that keyframe for X-Plane. Now, we'll jump to here. So we've got our trailing edge to the right, and uh, we know that the trailing edge to the right, it should be our positive degree so we're going to go right here, we're going to say it's 20 degrees, mark that keyframe. Now we'll go to our other one right here, and this is negative 20 degrees, and save that keyframe. Now, as we move, if you watch over here, as we cycle through, that value should change to the correct degree that it should be in the position it lives in. Okay, so we're all there. I'm actually, since I like things to be at zero, I'm gonna rotate this back. Rotate negative 20, oops, on the Z. Right there. And that, and then come here keyframe. There we go. I just like, I don't know, it's, it's a pers personal preference, but I like to um, keep zero or my number one frame or whatever you want to call it at neutral for everything and then I'll animate using later keyframes. That's, that's just personal preference. I don't know that that matters for anything really. Okay, so uh, let's now, and it's not super pretty because the shading's off because we still need to finish it, but let's make sure it works. So we've, we're going to go, see we've got our, our export layer over here, and I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I just filled these in. The auto detect doesn't usually work, so I've filled in what I know I'm going to label my textures, um, just so that it can write that down in the object file. And so I just filled it in and it should be exported with it. So we're going to export this object real quick and just see if it works. Go like that and I don't actually remember if I have that going to the right spot or not. Let's find out. Okay, I exported that somewhere else. I'm just going to bypass that real quick and export it this way because then I can tell it where I want it. Uh, I want it here. Objects. There. Export. 
Okay, now if I look at this, there we go, it's been updated. And if we do a real quick look at it in our text editor, you'll see, so those textures that I filled out in that texture spot, they get written right here. So that you don't have to continually add that. Now we're going to add later on when this is all done, we'll add some the global specular and, and stuff to make it so that it uses the metalness stuff. But uh, for now we're good. So let's just uh, make sure that works. So we'll pull up Plane Maker. Here we are in Plane Maker. Um, let's see. Objects. I think I deleted that object at some point. Open. Uh, outside. It's pretty big. It's going to create a a uh, shadow. Okay. Whoops. I don't need to add another one. All right. So you can see here. Maybe we'll hide our. Uh, it's a special. Where is it? Oh, expert. That's right. Visible part. Slash hide vertical stab. Okay, if we're looking here. Well, our object is here, but it doesn't appear to be animated correctly. because you notice everything's moving here and that's not moving so I did something out of order there um, let's take a look at that alright I figured it out what I've missed um, is I forgot to so I applied all the keyframes to our rudder. Right, watching over here, we've got our zero and our 20 degrees. What I forgot to do, and it act, you might only need to do it to the empty, I can't remember. I'll, I'll double check on that, but I didn't add that to the empty, which is actually doing our animation for us. So now that I've added the animation with the rudder, and the values on our empty here that has solved it and I can show you so so I've saved it I went ahead and exported and then we open up plane maker here there we have it now um, this doesn't guarantee that your animation is going in the correct direction for control input and it doesn't guarantee that it's actually connected to the right data ref this just is showing us that the animation is being recognized by X-Plane to verify that it's properly working and and doing exactly what you need it to do you would open up x-plane itself and look at it there I'm not gonna do that right now just because that's gonna take up more time than is necessary uh, so we'll ha we'll have plenty more animations to go over as we continue along and I will walk through each of those again so Hopefully that gets you started in animating everything, even all your pieces in the cockpit and all that, they all end up using the same method. So anyway, that's for now.